welcome to this Globe Claritest video um, where I'm going to give you an overview of the available Claritest tutorials. These tutorials have a value both to uh, commercial clients as a way of easily and effectively onboarding new staff with the software. Um, it can take people from zero experience of cyber processing through to um, a reasonable foundation knowledge of um, cyber processing and how Claritas performs key tasks within the cyber processing flow. Or again, can be extremely useful for academic institutions, universities, etc. As a teaching aid, um, we like to think of it almost uh, certainly for our 2D marine and 2D land tutorials as a seismic processing course in a box. So it allows you to basically deliver a processing 101 course to your students effectively and easily rather than having to build that entire course for yourself. So I'm just going to give you an overview of the tutorials that are available and what actually comes with each tutorial. So you can see on the screen here that we've got basically five tutorials listed from our advanced marine through to our 2D land one at the bottom of the list here. So basically in terms of the, the probably the two most important certainly for people starting with the software and for, in terms of the course in the box concept are the V70 2D land and V70 2D marine projects. Um, so again if I basically go to the projects here, up here and select to start with the 2D marine. So each project or tutorial comes as a Claritas archive of that project. So it can be easily restored using the restore option on the projects tab. And in that project cut, you get the initial raw seismic data. Um, we have reformatted from SegD or SegY, whatever the original format was, purely for ease in the tutorials, it makes the data sets more manageable in size and easier to work with at that initial outset. You also get typical job flows for testing and running production. So we have everything from a, a basic view job through true amplitude recovery, swell noise attenuation, deconvolution testing, radon application and testing, pre-stack time migration and post-stack conditioning, along with some production jobs using base parameters that we've selected, as well as an output job to create a final segway deliverable that you could load onto a workstation or something. So as well as that, if I go to the velocities tab and click on ISOVELS as an example, and click on the NMO file, you can also see that we get a bunch of example velocity fields that can also be used by the user um, and similarly we supply basic mutes and geometry information as well so that you have everything you need to process the data from start to finish we also provide documentation for the user who's starting to learn claritas or the students that you might be running through this basic 101 processing course um, so that basically the tutorial documentation takes you from getting started with the software, so assuming no knowledge of the software at all, how the launch and the size cat applications work, what they look like, etc. Explains the actual structure of a Claritas project, so it explains how to find help on the system, explains how to look and view the data and the viewers, gives you some information around the data sets itself in terms of um, source toe depth, shot point and receiver intervals, number of receivers along the line, trace length, etc. You also see occasionally these green boxes, so geophysical comments. So in this case, it's trying to explain some of the information around the shots and what's on there, what you're looking for when you're looking at the shots um, in terms of what they're dominated by in terms of direct arrivals and refraction energies. Advises you to, in this case, to look at shot to ID 200 because there's some low frequency swell noise burst on there as well. And also, if you look at shot ID 400, you can see what's described as tailboy jerk. So the greens are our geophysical comments, so they give you some understanding or a little bit more information beyond just do this, do that about the data set you're working with or some concept in terms of geophysics that we're playing with. Um, you'll also see sometimes in the, the project these orange expert user tips. So this is 
explaining how to do things in the software that might be a more effective way. So in this case, this first one is explaining some of the shortcuts that you can use for adding new modules into the job flow, rather than always having to click on the app or add buttons, you can in the command line field at the bottom of the job flow type something in. Um, so we're trying to structure the documentation into a base, what to do and step by step, but also some tips and tricks for the software or some underlying additional information about the geophysics and the data set you're working with. So we have that for the 2D Marine and similarly for the 2D Land project. The 2D Land project obviously as well as the basics around some of the things we've done in that 2D Marine also has to um, broaden concepts around the, the direct arrivals and how we might use them as part of the processing for land data um, and refraction statics analysis so it, it's there's a little bit more complex aspects of processing that in this 2D land project than in the 2D marine um, so they both give you a good base understanding of how to process marine data or how to process land data a bit more involved in terms of applying a geometry for land data set, so it's a bigger section in the, the tutorial. And again, direct arrivals, first breaks, first break picking, and refraction statics is um, a, a bigger, uh, more involved section in the 2D land one, whereas in the 2D marine, you're really looking at it and going, how can I remove my direct arrival energy? In this, you're looking at how can I utilize it to address near surface weathering layer velocity issues. So those are our two main tutorials, the 2D Marine and 2D Land. Um, we also have um, 2D, 3D projects. So the 3D Land project, again, is structured similar to the 2D Land project in that um, it's quite a broad scope. It takes you from raw data, in this case, the teapot dome, um, National Petroleum Reserve data set from Wyoming in North America. <coughs> um, takes you from the raw data which we supply, goes through the creation of the 3D land geometry and binning the data into CDPs in the 3D land sense. Uh, through denoising, um, refraction statics, residual statics, DMO, and post stack time migration. Um, so a fairly robust 3D processing flow for land data. Um, and again, the tutorial documentation is very um, thorough in covering all those aspects for that processing. Uh, we also have a 3D Marine. So 3D Marine is slightly different in that it's very much focused on delivering the user an understanding and basic job flows on how to add the navigation data that's supplied with the project into the seismic trace header and then how to bin that seismic traces into a 3D grid. So applying and, and adding 3D CDPs and inline crossline information into the seismic trace header and then creating a fold map using a pass by stacking the data into one volume. Um, so what we supply in terms of data for the 3D Marine is just um, single sample concatenated SegY data sets of the original concatenated SegDs that we were provided with. Um, so there are approximately 65 um, sequences recorded on these six um, C segwise, um, and then basically the job flow flows go through extracting each individual sail line, merging with the P one hundred and ninety navigation data for that sail line, binning, and then outputting, and then um, the second job is a partial stack job that basically reads that in, sorts to CDP, stacks the data, and then we can take those partial stacks, merge them all together, stack them as one volume and create a fold map for the data set to show that we've got all the sequences and all the data we're expecting. The project and the survey at sort of 500 square as well, not massive for a, a marine survey, is too large for us to be able to deliver 
the shots in their entirety. So that's why we concentrate on that geometry application and binning of the data and give you project or job flows that will allow you to do that. Then the other tutorial we have um, is the Advanced Marine. So the Advanced Marine project starts from a, the raw field segue of the TL001 offshore Taranaki line and it runs from shallow water down to deep. I'll go to that one. And basically in here what we have is job flows that again broadly process the, the line in a broadband sense and take us from reformatting that Segway data set through to effectively final broadband deghosted demultipled stack section and the processing steps we take up through that are running a 2D SRME which is required because this goes from shallow to deep water so there's some obvious multiple trends in there a robust and um, adaptive subtraction approach that works both on 2D and 3D data sets so is a good example job flow for people wanting to run adaptive subtraction in Claritas um, Telpi deconvolution and swell noise attenuation and two approaches to that a sort of a filtering a flag filter drop approach if you like and a approach using our DU swell module which uses a wavelet transform approach to separate identify the, the swell, noise, atten swell noise remove it or attenuate it and then reconstruct the um, affected frequencies a receiver deghosting job flow a source deghosting job flow high resolution PRT radon demultiple pre-stack time migration a high density velocity analysis workflow that we have and then post stack broadband processing so applying inverse Q and spectral whitening to basically just massage and further broaden and improve on the benefits that the source and receiver deghosting have already applied to give a full broadband solution for the seismic line. And again, this project comes with examples of mutes for the TLP domain processing, velocity fields, etc. This project, the Wavelet project and 3D Moon project, all rather than full PDF, documentation showing each step come with um, powerpoints which explain key parts of the processing and then the last project i'll talk about is our wavelet project um, so this basically explains how users can take or use our wavelet processing package um, to take say a far field signature from marine or a suitable wavelet from a land data set and create minimum phase or zero phase conversion filters. It just so happens that the Wavelet tutorial exists also as a, a video on our YouTube channel. So if you want to have a closer look at what Wavelet does, you can go along to our YouTube channel and take a look at that um, video and get a get a run through and a, a look at how Wavelet works and what you might want to do. So I think you can see we've got a, a well-structured set of tutorials that will allow people with little or no experience of seismic processing to, to start gain knowledge of the software and gain some valuable understanding about processing concepts and steps as well within these tutorials such that whilst they won't be expert processors at the end of the, the working through the tutorials they will have more confidence in what they're doing a better understanding of key concepts and enough knowledge to be able to ask the right questions of you and certainly for students whether that's a bachelor's or moving on to msc or phd gives them a grounding a good start such that if they're using seismic data in their projects that they can build on this knowledge with the help of either their supervisor or certainly the support of our help desk as well to develop and understand and get a, a better understanding of seismic processing and get a successful result out of any data sets that they're working on. So if you are interested in our tutorials, please do contact us and we can give you access if you're a Claritas client to the tutorials to download and have on your systems for people to use when they need to. They are a good resource, for example, job flows and workflows for key areas such as radon demultiple and other demultiple concepts. And if you are a, a university that needs to develop a, a course 
It includes some level of seismic processing. We believe that these tutorials are a, an excellent tool for people in that they remove the burden of building an entire course from the lecturer or person who's running the course enables you to concentrate on the key areas that you need to in terms of adding additional collateral such that you can develop on particular concepts as you need. So do contact us if you want to have a look at this as a teaching tool and yeah, thank you and goodbye.